Good afternoon all. I've been sent this little module by icstation.com. So thank you very much icstation.com. And I will put links to this module in the description below the video. But what is it? Well, it looks to me like it's a dual buck converter. Um, there's a DC input here. You've got two connector types. I'm going to use this one because uh, I've got a 2.1 millimeter cable coming from my lead acid batteries outside, which are at 13.6 volts. That means I can buck regulate that down to uh, five volts for these USB outputs. But because these are quick charge three and therefore quick charge two, and also FCP, ooh, what does that mean? Fast charge protocol, something to do with Huawei. MTK, something to do with MediaTek. Compatible, these can also put out uh, nine volts, 12 volts. Uh, now, first things first, if you're thinking you've seen this module before, well, you're probably thinking of this module, which is not quick charge compatible. There is a little chip on there, which um, can put voltages on these D plus and D minus pins so that the receiving device knows how much current is available. There's only the one chip. There are four ports. So these are obviously all in parallel. Can we see that? Mm, not exactly. Um, but this is not quick charge compatible. This one is. So let's plug it in and watch it light up. Now that doesn't tell us an awful lot. So what I'm going to use is uh, this. This is the uh, Rui Deng USB meter. Let me just get the card for that. It's the UM24C. This was very kindly sent to me by Martin. So thank you very much, Martin. Let's plug this in and see what we get out of one of these USB ports. And perhaps not surprisingly, we're getting 5.35 uh, volts. We can also see there on the D plus and D minus pins, we've got voltages. It's saying mode unknown. Um, I'm not sure what voltages come out of there without a quick charge device connected. Perhaps we should connect a quick charge device. Um, so this EC technology power bank certainly has um, a quick charge output. It's the green one there, but it has two regular micro B inputs. So I'm pretty sure it doesn't do quick charge on the input. We can very quickly plug it in and confirm that. I think the idea with these power banks where you have dual inputs is that you simply plug multiple uh, cables in to multiple output ports on your mains uh, wall charger and you simply get more current that way. So let's plug it in and find out. Right, here we go. Are we going to see a ramp up in voltage? No, we're certainly seeing a ramp up in current. 1.8 amps, 5 volts if I flick through the menus here. Um, we can go back to the initial screen, which also also shows me watts. So we've got uh, 9.8 watts there, 1.8, 1.9 amps. But no, that stayed at 5 volts. Let's try another power bank. Now, I'm aware that quite a few um, of the newer power banks do have a quick charge compatible input and, and therefore can take the higher voltage. But the only thing I've got is this really rather old OR key. Um, it says it's quick charge compatible, but nothing, no mention of quick charge three. There's, I've got a feeling this predates quick charge three. So this is quick charge two. It will take either five volts at 2.1 amps or nine volts at 1.8 amps. Let's see what it does take. Five volts initially. But then it negotiates that up to nine volts. I think this is reasonably well charged now. I was charging it yesterday. Yeah, it's not bad charged. Um, so that would go up to 1.8 amps if that were discharged. But yeah, certainly that's triggered the uh, quick charge system into producing nine volts rather than five volts on the output. Now, can we coax um, voltages other than five volts out of this thing or nine volts with the quick charge devices I've got? Well, here are some little quick charge trigger devices. Uh, this one I think is the oldest. This one is quick charge two. So let's plug this in and see what it does. There's no button on this. I think it just does five volts. And then when the blue light comes on, it does nine volts and then 12 volts. Now, interestingly, look at the brightness of this blue LED. That seems to be strapped directly across the uh, voltage output. 
and you can see it gets brighter when you're in 9 volts and 12 volts. So yeah, that one just simply cycles. Let's try this one. If I remember how this one works, um, it's different colors. Red for 5 volts. Let's press that. Green for 9 volts. And if I press it again, blue, and we've gone to 12 volts. And I think if I press and hold that, I've got a feeling it's now in quick charge three mode. No, I probably didn't press and hold it enough. And now I should be able to take it up in increments of 200 millivolts, but probably not from 12 volts. So let's take it back to, oh, I think I've confused it. Let's start again. Yeah, let's go back to five volts, press and hold it, wait till it changes color. And now I think I can go up in 200 millivolt increments. Yeah, 5.8, uh, that's probably about six. So that'll take it up to seven. And we simply increment the voltage in 200 millivolt increments. I don't think there's much more control over this thing. I think press, press and hold takes it down. I can't honestly remember, but yes, I can uh, dial in the voltage I want in 200 millivolt increment steps. Okay, let's take that one out. Then there's uh, this one, which is more sophisticated. Probably means I won't be able to remember. Whoops, don't want to touch that. How to use it. Um, this has quick charge two mode. Let's try that. Yep, that's nine volts and that's 12 volts. I'm able to coax 12 volts out of that. Look at the different brightnesses of the output LED when I do that. Now let's go mode into quick charge three. And here I think I can push this up in again, 200 millivolt increments. If I press and hold, does it do anything? I don't know, but that's going up in 200 millivolt increments. The indicator shows the approximate voltage coming out. So we're in the region of nine volts. But I think all of these devices top out at 12.2. Let's just see where this one tops out. 12.2. And yes, I don't seem to be able to coax it to go any higher. So certainly this is not putting out a protocol that can coax 20 volts out of this device. And in fact, the spec for this module says that, oh, that's gone off. The screen's timed out. Um, that the outputs are five volts, nine volts, and 12 volts. Uh, with a maximum of 25 watts per channel. So why was I particularly interested in this module? Well, I wanted this for the TS80 soldering iron, which has a USB-C connector, but I think it's USB type A on the other end. I think it can take five volts, nine volts or 12 volts. So this module should be fine to push the voltage up to 12 volts at up to uh, two amps, I presume, or whatever the maximum this can provide, certainly 25 watts. Um, for driving the TS80 uh, USB soldering iron from my 12 volt power supply. Um, now I'm just wondering, this is 13.6 coming in. If that were lower, it would probably struggle to produce 12 volts on the output. So maybe I'll be able to solder during the day and not in the evening or something like that. So yes, thank you very much again to icstation.com. I think this is gonna be a very useful device um, for me, particularly for the TS80 uh, soldering iron, which I've got on order. Um, very interesting, um, this whole fast charge thing, the quick charge, and now all the other variants, which just look like uh, variations on a theme. It's just methods of coaxing a, a higher voltage out of a nominally five volt USB port. Of course, the whole situation changes completely with USB-C. Um, that's a whole different ball game and power delivery up to 100 watts coming out of a USB type C port, but that's using a different connector. Um, it doesn't use type A or type B, which only have the four connections, positive, negative, and the two data lines. Type C has a whole bunch of extra connections. Um, but where USB type A is concerned, yes, we just have the two data lines for signaling, the two power lines, which can produce, as you can see, five volts, nine volts, or 12 volts. But this whole quick charge thing is a bit of a can of worms because um, everyone wants their phone to charge as quickly as possible. There are lots of different standards. I mean, I'm looking on the internet now and I can see Qualcomm quick charge, 
MediaTek Pump Express, I think that's the MTK, Samsung Adaptive Fast Charging, Oppo Super VOOC Fast Charge, OnePlus Dash Charging, which is just a rebranding of Super VOOC, Huawei Super Charge, I think that one's the FCP, uh, Anchor Power IQ. The whole point is this is a huge in-demand industry. People want their phones to charge quickly even though they probably don't fully understand the implications of shortening the life of their battery. So um, this device here is undoubtedly going to appear again on my desk when the TS80 soldering iron arrives, um, probably this display unit as well, so that we can see what voltage the TSA negotiates and therefore how much power, well, we'll be able to see how much power it's drawing. So uh, yeah, very interesting little uh, step down module this. And uh, I actually quite like the fact that this LED is just simply strapped across the uh, the voltage output of the USB socket. I quite like the visual feedback that that gives you as it changes through these different voltages. Yeah, that's cool. Cheerio.